the Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert coming to you from Baltimore. A scientist in China made what should be a momentous announcement on Monday. He claimed to have successfully edited the genes of a pair of twins who were born earlier this month. The Chinese scientist, He Jianqui, said that he altered the twins' genes so that they would be resistant to the HIV virus using a gene editing technique known as CRISPR. Here's how he justified the project in an interview with the Associated Press. I feel a strong responsibility uh, that it's not just to make it first, but also make it uh, as example how to perform like this, consider the morality of the society, and consider its impact to the public. Genetic engineering of human genes is illegal in the United States and in most other countries with the potential technology to do so. However, in China, there's no law against it, even though many scientists have expressed strong opposition to the practice. Joining me now to discuss the implications of this announcement is Professor Stuart Newman. He's professor of cell biology and anatomy at New York Medical College in Valhalla, and he is a founding member of the Council for Responsible Genetics and editor-in-chief of the journal Biote Biological Theory. He is also the author of the forthcoming book, Biotech Juggernaut. Thanks, Stuart, for joining us today. Thank you. So the, the scientist who did this, Hei Jiung Kui, he said that he succeeded in this genetic engineering project, um, but he did not provide any proof that it actually worked. How likely do you think it is that it actually did work? Well, I think he's a, a serious scientist. I, I won't uh, uh, comment right now on uh, the morality of what he did, but um, uh, I think that he knows what he's doing scientifically. And uh, I, I would, and I've met him, um, and I think that um, uh, his claim, uh, as far as I can tell, is probably valid. So in an article that you published last year, you expressed skepticism that the CRISPR technology could actually do some of this kind of genetic engineering uh, that, uh, that was used in this particular uh, uh, test. Why is it, what is the issue around, uh, first of all, we'll get to the morality later, but I just wanted to get into the technique for a second. Uh, why are you skeptical about uh, this project of, of uh, genetic engineering using uh, this kind of technique? Well, um, th there's a difference between um, modifying a gene, even accurately modifying a gene, and um, bringing about uh, a, a phenotypic effect, that is a biological effect. So in the um, article that you probably saw, um, I said that um, CRISPR won't be useful in um, bringing about the results that people want, because um, the way genes operate in embryos uh, is not uh, the way that they operate in adult organisms. In an adult organism, you can look at a gene and say it more or less does one thing or it does two things. During uh, embryonic development, uh, it interacts with many other genes in a very uh, quickly changing system. And the, um, the proteins that the gene specifies don't necessarily do the same thing uh, during development that they do in the adults. So I was skeptical about the ability to bring about desired results. But if um, it's claimed that CRISPR can take a piece of DNA and change it in a specific way, yes, it can do that. So as we saw in the clip of He Jung Kui, he says that he felt it was important to do this and to do it for basically what he considered to be a good cause or a good reason. What's your reaction to this argument and what do you see as being the dangers of this type of work? Well, I think it's very unjustified that he did it. First of all, um, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's just looking at the known function of the gene uh, in adult uh, humans. Uh, he's not looking at the function during uh, embryonic development. Uh, there, there is a whole um, set of unknowns in uh, the developmental process, and we don't really have good scientific control over um, manipulating it. And we, we may never do because it's so complicated. So um, he has taken um, a gene with a known function in the adult, and he's um, said it's bad to have that gene active, so he inactivated it. But it's um, really, there's a, a lot of um, misconceptions and um, kind of uh, kind of unthinking, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, moving ahead uh, in what he did uh, that uh, he should have never done it. So, um, 
what is at stake here, basically? And what do you see as being the best way to avoid this, the worst kinds of consequences of this technology? Well, I think, um, you know, he's taking something that uh, I guess he would say everybody agrees that it would be good to be resistant against AIDS or other viral diseases. So he's looking for some kind of um, agreement in what he did uh, by the uh, particular problem that he addressed. But um, in fact, um, the what some people consider uh, an, an impairment, other people don't consider an impairment. And in, in, in uh, particularly American society, I can't speak for Chinese society, uh, there's a kind of a consumerist ethic uh, which says that um, if somebody wants to pay for something and, uh, uh, and it's possible to do, they should uh, be allowed to do it. And, and in fact, you said in, at the top of the um, segment that there are laws against it in the United States, but there really aren't. There are not laws in the United States against genetically modifying embryos. So um, we would have to pass such laws in order to prevent it from happening. And even passing the laws won't prevent it from happening because there'll be people who do it um, uh, surreptitiously. So um, I think that um, we really have to talk about it a lot. It has to be stigmatized. It has to be something that um, a lot of a program uh, falls on somebody who would attempt such a thing because um, in many cases, it will turn out badly. And then what do you do with uh, kind of the unfortunate uh, outcomes uh, that turned out worse rather than better than, uh, than hoped for? This is really a totally poorly motivated project. Well, what do you think, first of all, uh, are the motivations behind this technology and uh, this project? Well, it's just kind of a, a simple-minded um, approach to a, a medical problem. Uh, I mean, um, it, it, it's like um, saying that um, AIDS is bad, this gene is associated with AIDS, get rid of this gene and we won't have AIDS or something. So it really, it won't affect AIDS in the population. It will affect it in a couple of individuals. And if those individuals that have been genetically modified, if it works, and I doubt that it will work as, as uh, intended, but if even if it does work, it'll just give a license to those uh, resistant individuals to act irresponsibly. Uh, not use precautions, not get themselves tested if they're at risk and so on. So it's, um, it's really um, crazy, actually, I would quote crazy to, to try to do this. And it's um, scientifically, um, on, on, um, it's based on a poor understanding of, uh, of science. Um, I guess the main issue here perhaps is that uh, there's a lot of unintended potential for unintended consequences and that the issues are really, or the, 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 the biology is a lot more complicated than people make it out to be if you look only at the individual genes. Is that, is that more or less it in that, a nutshell? That's absolutely true, yes. And it's, um, uh, th there's a, a kind of a false notion that um, uh, if you understand uh, an organism's genes, or if, if you can uh, modify the organism's genes, you can understand how the organism works, and you can get it to work uh, in a new way, um, in a, in a um, kind of an engineering uh, paradigm. And this is not true at all. Um, genes are not the only thing that are controlling what goes on in an organism, uh, particularly during early development. Um, there are many forces, uh, there are physical forces, Forces, environmental forces involved in molding the embryos, not just the genes. And um, the other thing that's not recognized in these um, uh, attempts is that um, genes don't always do the same thing in the same context. So the very same gene acting at different stages in the life history of an individual can do very different things. And this is not taken into account at all in these experiments. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for now. I'm speaking to Stuart Newman, Professor of Cell Biology and Anatomy at New York Medical College in Valhalla. Thanks again, Stuart, for having joined us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. If you like Real News Network stories such as this one, please keep in mind that we have started our winter fundraiser and need your help to reach our goal of raising $400,000. Every dollar that you donate will be matched. Unlike practically all other news outlets, we do not accept support from governments or corporations. Please do what you can today.